boy. And the Bible says that he goes on down and up on the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. Then notice he says, he says, verse 3, God said, let there be light and there was light. Now wait a minute, I thought God, this was on the first. And God said, let there be light. That's Shekinah light. That's God's glory, His presence there that is illuminating in the darkness. The word light there means entrance. In other words, God's getting ready to step into something and the Spirit of God is moved upon it. And whenever God starts speaking things into existence, God only works. Even Jesus said, I must work while it is day, for night doth cometh. God walks in the light. He is absolute light. He says, He walks in the light as He is in the light, and we have fellowship one with another. But this is the kind of glory. This is what Apostle at times uh, saw, who became Paul on the road to Damascus. And you remember the sun within its brightness shining bright as a noonday but there was something brighter that shined around about him it was the glory or the Shekinah glory of God he established the Shekinah glory is the first light the second light is here which I read to you in the text it is the sun, the moon, and the stars and God created them on the fourth day that is natural light that's the things that which in nature that God has placed there and set them in the heavenly realm so that me and you could have light here upon this earth. We could have the sun by day and it is to rule up over the darkness and the moon by night. And we have these and the stars and so forth. Then the third light is man-made. And man-made light is that which we're using here within the church. It's powered by electricity. It's candles. It's uh, flashlights. It's so these kind of things and inventions that are made by man. That is man-made light. But here in the Word of God, God is a type. Uh, Jesus is a type of the sun. If you notice here, as I said already, now the sun itself, the sun is at the center of our solar system. It's right at the very heart of it. Isn't it good? Because everything around it, all the other planets, revolve around the sun. Do you know every time Jesus has to be right there in the midst, of whatever me and you are doing, he's right there in the center of it, at the heart of it all. It should be the Lord Jesus Christ. And everything, I know when we're lost and undone without God, we think everything ought to be revolving around us. But in fact, everything still revolves around him, around about the throne of God. He is the light of the world. John 8, 12, the sun, the S-U-N, is a light to the world. And in John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world, and he that followeth me shall not walk in darkness. Amen. Do you know that the, the sun, it is often, it is the star that you, which you see in the day. The all other stars you'll see at the nighttime if it's a clear sky with the sun. Do you know why you could call? That's why Jesus is called the day star. He's the bright and morning star. When you wake up in the morning, you're, you should begin your day. You begin it with the sun. And you end it, you should end it with the sun. Well, my Bible says Jesus is the alpha and he is the omega. He is the beginning and he is the end. We should start our day with Jesus and we should end our day with Jesus. Amen. There are so many things about in the Word of God that God will teach you there and, and about the sun. But it is essential for the light and the sun puts off the light. Now the earth itself and here in the Word of God, God has uniquely placed these things. The moon itself, the moon is, it does not have light within itself. The moon does not, uh, is not energized like the sun. The sun is self-sufficient. I could spend more time deeper on the sun. Uh, time's sake, I probably won't. But the sun is self-sufficient. Nothing's fueling the sun. You see, all the hydrogen and so forth that is within the sun, it's self-sufficient. Jesus is self-sufficient. If he wants water, he is the water. Why would he want it? He is the water. Why would he want bread? He is the bread. Everything that you ever need and so much more can be found in the sun. Well, the sun is made up of primarily three different parts. Only one sun. You know there's only one God. 
but he's made of three, God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. But there's something unique about everything. The sun puts off the light, but the moon doesn't have any light within itself. The moon just reflects the light that is given to it from the sun. Do you know that's what we do as Christians? I don't have any light till the Lord Jesus comes into my heart and my life, and then he gives me light, and I reflect the sun. That's what he wants us to do. So then at nighttime I look up there and you may see the quarter or the half or the full moon, but you see the moon, sometimes the full, shining within all of its glory. And whenever at times like the moon and the sun and the stars, whenever we do that which God has created us to do, we'll give glory unto God. The Bible says here in this passage of Scripture that he set them. Notice that in the Word of God. The Bible says he said on down there in verse 17, and God set them in the firmament of heaven. Can I say that God has set me and you right where he wants us as Christians? God places you in your community. God places you in your job. And sometimes even like the stars at night, the only time you really see them is when it's dark, in it? And I believe at times, you know, God will place us right there in the midst where it's the darkest so you can burn the brightest for Him right around all that foul language, right around that lustful people, right around that gamblers, right around that so you can, others could see the sun. <laughs> Jesus said in Matthew 5, For you are the light of the world, a city set on a hill and cannot be hid. Jesus intended on us. He set you up high so that he intended on you to be looked at so others could see the Son of God working within your life by how that you talk and how that we walk and how that we live. Thanks be unto God. I want others to see Jesus. I want them to see the sun in me. And that's what you see at night when you see the moon. The moon's reflecting the sun. But the sad thing is, at times whenever the moon gets in between the sun and the earth, then the moon is not reflecting or giving off glory. Rather, it's trying to receive all the glory. It's a sad sometimes we're not careful, as even as Christians, sometimes we're not careful, we'll try to get some glory rather than give the glory. <laughs> we're trying to hide sometimes the sun. The moon will hide the sun rather than so the world can't see the sun. Why should we want to hide our light under the bushel? So many people today and even spiritually in which we live are trying to hide. We're trying to hide him in our government, trying to hide him in our schools. We're trying to hide him in various things. Even in some churches, they take out the blood, they take out the gospel, they take out various things. <laughs> the world still needs to see Jesus, don't they? We don't need not to get caught up with trying to, to get the glory and get in between the world and the people at times and catch all the glory of the sun and hide the sun. But whether we need to give the glory. Give the glory to who? Well, he gives it to us so we can give so the world can see Jesus. We need to give him the glory. Apostle Paul said in Galatians 6.14,